after COVID, we lost two of our seniors here. And uh, it was a depressing time. I, I can still remember thanking God. What am I going to do? Our class, our class is almost gone. But when I look around here this morning, I see all these faces. I thank God for each one of you that are here. That God's, God's got a plan for each one of you. And I'm so glad to see each one of you. We're glad to have Sister Liliana and Brother Larry here this morning. They have a really great day at the church. And, I, and we sent out texts. I hope most of you got them that we were having our class this morning. And, I, and Pam said, you want to send them one? I said, yeah. I said, they might decide to come, and they did. <laughs> yeah. God is good. And I want to thank God. My sister Donna's over here. She came this morning. Yeah. I mean, it's just a blessed time, and I'm thankful for it. <laughs> We've got a speaker, Brother David Twiner. Where are you at? Am I not sending you for some reason? There he is. Come on up here. I went and asked him, I said, Brother Connor, will you do our class? And uh, I said, you got some committed for me one time this year, and I was out of town. And so I heard good reports on him, and what a good job he did. And I said, I haven't gotten to hear you up for that. And he says, I'll do it for one thing. He said, I'll do one of the fresh apple cakes. <laughs> so come on up here, I got you. <laughs> The Lord is good and he's our Savior. Y'all are dismissed. Y'all hear me all right? We're good, Brother Adrian? You want me to swap? Try the other one. Try the other one. What about that? Better? Maybe I won't get too excited up here this morning. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody glad to be here today? Amen. Yes. Yeah. I know I say this a lot, but uh, you could be in ICU this morning. Right. Amen. But God has allowed us to be here one more time yeah. to worship Him, to lift Him up, to magnify Him. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful that I get to come one more time and yeah. to lift Him up and to praise Him. Anyway, thank y'all for allowing me to, to come. I know y'all said I did a good job last time, but don't don't bank off that last time. <laughs> Amen. That was all the Lord. I, it may be a flunk today, but with God's help, we're going to get through it today. Amen. But I do believe I have a word for this group today. Uh, when she Sister Joyce came to me, and my mind immediately began to ponder, well, what can I speak? And the Lord just dropped this thought in me, and... and uh, so we're just going to see how it goes. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, let's go to Exodus, the 14th chapter. We're going to begin reading at verse number 20. Exodus, the 14th chapter, verse number 20. I hope I get, I've been battling, anybody been battling sinuses for the last few days? Oh man, it's, it's killing me. So I hope that I can make it through it without getting choked up today. Amen. Exodus 14 and 20, it reads this. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the, into the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. 
And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them. Amen. Fighteth, the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord saith unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned. And they covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them. Amen. Just for a, a little bit today, if you'll just give me a chance, I promise I'm not going to be there today. Amen. I want to just... Teach, preach, whatever. I mean, it's, it's going to be a little bit of both today. Amen. An elder with a made up mind. An elder with a made up mind. Can we just lift our hands right here, right now? Brother Claiborne, if you could, let's, I want to ask you, let's just pray over us today and pray over this message. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, in the name of knowing Jesus. that you are the great God and Hallelujah. creator of all Jesus. things, Hallelujah. knowing that your word is true. Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint this young man, your voice for the moment, God. I'm asking you, Lord, do something great in the presence of this, your people, God, today. Do a work, Lord, that only you can do, unmistakably, undeniably, those host of heaven. God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands up to the Lord, and let's give God some praise today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. An elder with a made-up mind. So we, we, we all know the story of of Moses and I just want to kind of hit the highlights of it just to remind us but God gives Moses a job to do to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt and we've all heard the story of the burning bush and how God used the burning bush to get Moses' attention and, and God tells Moses to go to Egypt and to tell Pharaoh to let his people go and we know that the story, how the story goes on, how Pharaoh doesn't listen and God begins to strike Egypt with plagues. And the first plague was the river turned to blood and the fish died and the water couldn't be drunk. And, but yet Pharaoh still wouldn't let his people go. And the second plague was, was frogs everywhere. The Bible says they were in the ovens and they were in the beds. Amen. Can you just imagine waking up one morning? Amen. I don't mind frogs, but I don't want them in my cereal bowl. Amen. There was, there was frogs everywhere. But we read that Pharaoh was still willing to sleep one more night with the frogs. And there was plagues of lice and flies. Amen. I know the flies have been really bad the last few days at my house. And I'm already ready for them to go. So I couldn't imagine having lice and flies. But... Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. And then we read that the cattle died and then the locusts came and then there was a plague of darkness and it wound up taking the death of Pharaoh's son for him to finally let God's people go. Amen. We know we, we, we just, we, we've heard that Bible story time and time again. And have you ever wondered just why life is so difficult? Amen. We, we know that we've been saved and we've been delivered and we've been given a new life with new opportunities and say and we, we tell ourselves and we tell our family that we're on our way to heaven. Amen. But however, every now and then we get to a, po a point in life where everything just seems to go wrong. We get in a point in life where everything just begins to work against us. We begin to have problems on our jobs and we begin to have problems in our homes and we get to a point where our health 
seems to be on a, a steady decline rather than on an incline. And we have headaches and, and back aches and muscle spasms and blood pressure goes up, heart rate slows down. Amen. We, we find ourselves trying every kind of medication, every remedy, uh, all the doctors, amen. But nothing seems to be doing any of us any good. Amen. On the job, maybe some of us that are still working it, it feels like as soon as we get one problem solved, two more problems pop up. And Amen. If you like me, when you're at the house, as soon as one bill is paid off, somebody else is calling and wanting something else. Amen. And then we get to a point and sometimes where we start to notice problems in the church. That's not a good thing. Amen. We, we start noticing that the pastor preaches too long or the praise team is off key. It's, it's too cold. It's too hot. It's the music's too loud. I can't hear sister so-and-so, brother so is doing this and doing that. I want to I wanna just, I, I, and I'm kind of going slow today because I'm, I'm going somewhere. If y'all could just stay with me today. But if we start noticing this stuff happening in our life, we need to take a minute to examine ourselves. We need to examine ourselves and say, God, am I doing what you need me to do? Amen. God, I, I may be a little bit older than I used to be. I'm not able to do the things, but God, am I still in your will? Amen. Amen. We, as you know, I'm, I'm young. I, I realize that today. Amen. And I am preaching to the joy group. But you still have to be in God's will regardless of how old you may be. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the children, we we, we got to realize, we, we don't want to, uh, how do I explain this? We don't want to have the same mentality that the children of Israel received. And well, we, well, I'm just going to explain it, okay? We need to make sure that we're not making the same mistakes that they made. See, we just read that the children of Israel was enslaved in Egypt. And they cried out to God because of their bondage. And God spoke to Moses in a burning bush, and God told Moses, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry. Right. And I know their sorrows. Yes. Amen. I want to tell you today that God still hears your cries. God still knows your sorrows. Amen. And God says, therefore, I have come down to deliver them from the out of the hand of the Egyptians and then bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey. And so God told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And we know how the story went. Amen. Through many signs and wonders and miracles, God freed the people of Israel from the Egyptians. Amen. He, we read that how he brings them to the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his army was on their track. We know that how when they get to the Red Sea, they look to the left and they look to the right and there was nowhere to go. And we know how it is sometimes. There's trouble on every side. We feel like every time we wake up that the enemy is right on our coat. Amen. He's right there just trying to get to us. Amen. But what was crazy in this story is that the story did not end there. After just three days journey, they ran out of water and they came to Mara. But they could not drink the water because it was bitter. But God showed Moses a tree and when he cast the tree in the water, the water was made sweet and they was able to drink from the water. We know it was not long before they ran out of food and they began to plain, complain. So God fed them bread from heaven. And when they ran out of water again, we read that God provided water through a rock. Amen. And we know how he was a cloud to keep them cool during the daytime. And he, he led them by day with a, a pillar of fire by night. We know how he fought their battles and kept them safe from harm. We read in the Bible, we find the children of Israel has made it safely through the desert. 
the dark, the hard times are behind them. They've been saved and they've been delivered. And they're on the border of the promised land. The land that is flowing with milk and honey. The land that God has promised them. But because of their fear and their doubt, they don't go in to possess the land. And they begin to cry and mourn. And the Bible says they, that they begin to murmur against Moses and his brother Aaron, the priest. And, and the whole congregation said to them, if we had only had died in the land of Egypt. And they said, on the other hand, if we had only died in the wilderness. And they begin to say one to another, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? And they decided it would be better for them if they went back in to Egypt. So they said one to another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Amen. I want to kind of get real with you today. I don't want to just, uh, just kind of go through the motions, but I want you to begin to think to yourselves today. Amen. How many of you today... Deep down because of the sorrows and the problems that you are going through right in this moment. Amen. That the devil has put in your mind you need to just go back to Egypt. Amen. It, it, it's just things are too tough. Amen. Things get difficult. And you find yourself wanting to turn around and go back into the world and start doing the things that the way the world does them. Amen. I know today. Without a shadow of a doubt in my mind that I am looking at a group of elders today that you have made up in your mind that no matter what comes my way, what I have to go through, amen, that I refuse to go back to Egypt. Amen. God, I, I want to tell you this, God never, never intended on them going back to Egypt. Amen. I feel like if he would have intended on them going back to the Egypt, he would have left the, the Red Sea up. He would have allowed it to, 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 to continue, amen, to be dry ground for them to go back to Egypt on. Amen. But what God did was when he delivered them and he freed them. And I'm telling you today, amen, God freed you and delivered you maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Amen. God didn't intend on you, amen, in your later part of your years, amen, to continue to have to go through things and to fight things. God has done delivered you from it, amen. And God don't intend on you going back to that. Amen. You may be in the desert in your life right now. But look at you. I want you to examine yourself today. Amen. You're still being fed. You're still being taken care of. You're here today. Amen. Because God has made a way for you. Amen. You may say, well, you don't understand what I'm going through. I didn't have all these problems in the world. Yeah, you did. You just didn't realize it. Amen. But you must realize just as God has always provided for the children of Israel. Amen. He's going to provide for you today. Amen. The Bible says that they never needed anything. No need for nothing. They didn't even grow out their clothes. They were walking around in miracles every day and they didn't even realize it. That's right. God, they were hungry. God had provided bread through them. They needed water. God provided water. Everything that they needed, God continued to provide. And God allows them to go through a little bit of trouble and they begin to burn them. And complain. I want to tell you today, God has provided you time and time and time again throughout yeah. your years. Yeah. Amen. What problem you're going through today, it's no different than the problem you went through 20 years ago. That God healed your body 20 years ago. That God provided for you 20 years ago. The same God that was provided back then, amen, is the same God that is here today that is still providing, that is still delivering. 
Amen. You're walking in miracles all around you today. Amen. We've, we've got to stop complaining. Amen. I know that, that some of us, amen, we wake up in pain every day and, and we're going through it. But maybe we need to just look, have a new mentality towards it and just start, instead of complaining, just say, God, I'm thankful that I get to wake up today. God, I may be hurting today, but God, I still thank you that I got a house to live in. God, I still thank you that I have a car to drive. Hey man, we need to start thinking God for the things that we have instead of complaining about the things that we don't have. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm so sick and tired of the devil. Amen. Telling our elders, telling our young folks, amen, telling our middle-aged people, just telling the people of God in general what they can and what they can't do in the kingdom of God. Amen. Just because you're in the joy group, amen. Just because you're a, a little older than the youth group, amen. Doesn't mean that you can't be on fire for God. Doesn't mean that you still can't go out and teach Bible studies and go out and reach people. God is still looking for whosoever will. Amen. Newsflash, that doesn't have an age limit on it. It says for whosoever will. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of you today may feel like you can't take another step in your journey. Your kids are giving you fits. Your finances all are out of whack. You've been knocked down. But I want to tell you today, God is saying today is your day. Joy and peace can come today. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 8, it says this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. I want to tell you today, you may have been cast down this morning. Amen. But you haven't been destroyed. You may be, you don't know whether to go left or right. Amen. But God is saying today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of peace and joy. Amen. I wish I could get some people today to get behind me on that. That your peace and your joy is coming into this place today. Come on, somebody. By faith, God gave you kids. Amen. And by faith, you're going to be saved. Somebody needs to stand to their feet right now and begin to claim their kids under God. Come on, I'm sick and tired of the devil telling us that our lost loved ones are just lost. Amen. By faith, our kids are coming back. By faith, our lost loved ones are coming back. Come on, we need to grab a hold of that promise right now. Amen. 
2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love. And of a sound mind, I wanted to tell you today, if you walked in this place with fear, it's time that you speak to that fear. Amen. And tell that fear that it needs to go. You need to get the fear out of your home. Amen. You need to pray over fear over your family. Amen. And over your kids. Amen. It is not God's will for us to walk around in Egypt and be held captive by fear. Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Galatians 6 and 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If I can tell you anything today, you need to have a made-up mind. I know that some of you Amen. has probably been living for God for 30 plus years. You've seen miracles time and time again. You've seen other people be healed. You've seen yourself be healed. You've went through things that you said only God could have brought me through. It. But yet you're sitting here today worrying and have fear on you. You don't know how God's going to bring you through it. But I want to I, I want to encourage you today. I want you to think on the old things just for a minute. I want you to think about the past miracles that God has brought you through. And I want that to begin to let it build your faith in this place this morning. God, if you brought me through that cancer years ago. God, if you brought me through that sickness years ago. God, you can bring me through it today. Come on, we need a made up mind in this place this morning that we're no longer going to walk in fear. We're going to have a made up mind that no matter what comes our way, we're going to continue to run this race. Hey man, as we all just, if we're able to stand across this house, I wonder if we can just stand right now. I know we got tables in front of us, but I really feel the presence of the Holy Ghost beginning to move in this place right now. Come on, Joy Group, you can make it. God has delivered you this far. Your promise is still right just right around the corner. Come on, let's make our mind up today. We're going to kick fear to the curb. We're going to kick fear out of our house. And we're going to make up our mind today. We're not going to be like the children of Israel and walk around and murmur and complain in our miracles. But we're going to thank God for our miracles and continue to believe God for the promise. Isaiah chapter 43. This is the last scripture and I'm turning it back over. We're going to allow the Holy Ghost to move in here. Isaiah 43 and 15. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One. I'm the creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Which is which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse and the army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as toad. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye know it? I will even make a way. In the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. You may be thinking today, God, how can you do it? I've never even seen you do anything like this before. 
Amen. And God is, I believe God has sent me here today. Amen. To let you know that he's missing to bring some rivers to your desert. Amen. He's missing to make a way out of your wilderness. You don't see how? God, let me tell you something. God loves it when you don't see a way out of it. Amen. That way when he begins to make a miracle, you begin to say, only God could have done it. Amen. It's for the kingdom and the glory of God. Amen. Let's lift our hands right now all over this place. Amen. And if you want to, let's take our neighbor by our other hand. Amen. And let's begin to pray together. Unify together. Amen. God is going to bring you through it. Amen. Whatever the trial is today, God is going to bring you through it. Come on, no problem is too big for our God. Amen. I want your faith to begin to increase today. Amen. God is going to bring you through it. God is going to bring your kids home. Amen. God is going to put their marriages back together. In the name of Jesus. Come on, he's delivered you. He's brought you through. Amen. We can't go back now. Amen. Even in our older age, we can't. Re- we got to refuse to go back. We got to continue to push forward. Come on, God has already washed the enemy away. Amen. God has not took care of the issue. God has not took care of the problem. Amen. He just needs you to have faith and trust in him that he's already taken care of it. Come on, begin to cast it to God right now. Begin to cast that trial, that situation you got right now. Begin to cast it to God. God wants us to do. When we cast our trials, we cast our situation and our problems and our fear and our anxiety, when we cast it, don't go look for it. Right. 
told to look for. I believe today, and whoever's coming, I don't know who's going to destroy this before. God has delivered you today. I believe God has done a work in here this morning. Amen. And you've given it to God. The situation, the trial, and I would encourage you, don't pick it back up at 7 o'clock in the morning. When Monday morning comes, don't pick it back up. I want you to wake up and say, God, I want you to make up in your mind. When 7 o'clock comes in the morning and you wake up, whatever time you wake up, and just like every other Monday morning before, that thoughts and the fear and the anxiety and everything just starts wailing in. But tomorrow, I want you to wake up and say, not today, Satan. Yeah. Amen. Not today, devil. I've got a made up mind that I'm giving it to God. And I gave it to God. And God is going to see me through it. Amen. 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 I love every one of y'all. Continue to do what you do. Continue to do what you do. We need it. My generation needs it. We need your thoughts. We need your prayers. We need your guidance. Amen. If it took, if it took Brother Meadows 20 years to figure out something, and he can keep and he can say, hey, don't do that. That just saved me 20 years of time. That's right. Amen. Don't be scared to. Hey, I know some of your older folks, y'all going to give y'all's opinion whether we want to hear it or not. <laughs> Continue doing it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Sister Deborah. Really, you know, she, I got some extra parts, so I just appreciate some of that I couldn't even <clears throat> think when he was preaching this morning. Brother Jonathan Dudek talked to us tonight and talked about heaven. What, what we knew about heaven. And one of the scriptures he talked about, he said that their name, that his name is going to be written in our forehead. And I thought, he's the light of the world. He's the light. We won't have a sun up there. We won't have nothing that needs light. But his name is going to be written here so we will shine like him. In a sense, you know, his name's going to be written in our, in our forehead. And anybody that hasn't been baptized in Jesus' name, Please pray about it. I know we're older in here and all, but if you haven't been yeah. if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, you got to take on his name. That's, that's right. right. So I do know that Brother Jonathan Nolly told me that he's got somebody here that's going to be baptized this morning in Jesus' name. So we're going to dismiss him. Amen. So everybody she's having her baptism. But has anybody got anything they would like to say before we dismiss? He's a mighty God. He's kept us all. And I thank God for each one of you, Sister Chris. I just want, I want to say tomorrow is the first It's just the beginning, and God told us it would be like that. Look at what's happening in our in our part of the world. Yes. We're seeing the floods. We're seeing earthquakes. We're seeing all these things that God said well, this would be the sign of his coming. So we know he's coming, and we've got a job yes. to do. We're here for a reason. He could have took us all out this morning, but we're here for a reason. We've got somebody that we can touch or somebody that we can we can tell about Jesus and how good he's been to us. <coughs> uh, Brother Clayburn, would you come up and dismiss us? I'm so glad to have a Brother Lynn. <laughs> 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 and, and I love each and every one of you. And thank y'all for coming. It's uh, just a joy to have you in there. Praise the Lord. It's a joy to be in the joy class. Yes. <laughs> I see a lot of old faces. I see a lot of new faces. It's a great time to be living for the Lord. Yes. Uh, just look around and see that the coming of the Lord is soon yes. to take place. Will you just pray together with me? Will you just lift up your hands, lift your voices, and let's let God know we got no intentions of going back to Egypt. Father, we love you. I thank you, sir, for your word. I thank you for the voice that we heard of your word today, God. God, I pray that your blessings be upon this people. Keep them, 
God give them strength. God let them make the right decisions in life. Just help us, God, as we go along our way today. Help us, God, and bring us back at the next time, God, in this place, that we're able to lift up our voices and our hands unto you and rejoice in the Lord. Revive us again, O oh God, that your people might rejoice in thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Amen. I bless you all this year.